your single source of truth. Be alert. Suspicious of everyone. Take no chances. Does Dan Jacinda and Dan yourself have different views on where the Christchurch call should go? Uh, no, no, no. We, we had a number of, we had a conversation um, actually just after the election and we met in person just before Christmas. Um, no, we've been, you know, I've been very supportive of her and her work there and, and the actual Christchurch call. Um, we're just both asking the same question, which is, where does it go to next? Don't argue with me. As leaders, we're rightly concerned that even the most light-touch approaches to disinformation could be misinterpreted as being hostile to the values of free speech that we value so highly. But while I cannot tell you today what the answer is to this challenge, I can say with complete certainty that we cannot ignore it. To do so poses an equal threat to the norms we all value. After all, how do you successfully end a war if people are led to believe the reason for its existence is not only legal, but noble? How do you tackle climate change if people do not believe it exists? How do you ensure the human rights of others are upheld when they are subjected to hateful and dangerous rhetoric and ideology? The weapons may be different, but the goals of those who perpetuate them is often the same, to cause chaos and reduce the ability of others to defend themselves to disband communities, to collapse the collective strength of countries who work together. But we have an opportunity here to ensure that these particular weapons of war do not become an established part of warfare. The work of the Christchurch Corps has been important.